Hi, I'm Aiden. I'm Colton. And I'm Chaiman. And this is our presentation on India during the Industrial Revolution. We're going to be talking about what happened in India before the Industrial Revolution, during the Industrial Revolution, and after the Industrial Revolution. While also talking about a few other things, like the spinning jenny and the destruction of handmade crafts in India. I hope you enjoy. Let's go, baby. Bread don't bake yourself. We even get me started off India during the Industrial Revolution. But it, I mean, you can't really criticize them. It's like a different story. Okay, I, what? Well, I, I mean, I don't really know much, but you know, I wish someone could like come out and you know, help us out. You know what I mean? Did someone say? Oh that? my God! In the Industrial Revolution? Say less. I'll cover everything. Who are you? Bro, don't you know? That's the legendary teacher, Mr. Vindaloo. Yup, the one, the only. Vinda who? No, Vindaloo. Yeah, Vindaloo. Well, you know me. I'm only the best teacher in the world. And I'll tell you everything there is to know about the India Industrial Revolution. Bro, I don't want to learn about that. Anyway, so before we can learn about India during the Industrial Revolution, we must learn about India before the Industrial Revolution. Let's go, guys! Okay. So way back before the Indian Industrial Revolution, their main source of income were textiles and the sales of cotton. As said by Howard, India's main money source was based off the cotton textiles manufactured there. India made their own handmade goods. They even ended up trading with their bordering countries. Young Indian boys scurry to me like rats for these premium handmade textiles. We'll spin. This is pure cotton hand woven. They love it. Absolutely. Wait, why, why are my clothes different? What did you do? Yeah, why are my clothes different too? As you can see, they are loving these fresh, hand-woven Indian textiles made of pure Indian cotton. As said by Howard, the Mughal Empire had developed a safe and vast infrastructure. Things like Indian cloths and silks were worn in places as far away as Persia and China. by Howard, the Mughal Empire had developed a large and safe infrastructure. Things like Indian cloths and silks were worn in places as far away as Persia and China. India had a preliminary government and was considered very powerful as they produced their own cotton textiles. In 1750, some historians believe India to be the most important manufacturer in world trade at the time, producing about 25% of the world's goods. Before the Industrial Revolution, India was mainly populated by Indians, as at that time they had very little British influence or influence from colonialism that they would later have. Now that we've talked about India before the Industrial Revolution, I think it's time for us to talk about India during the Industrial Revolution. What do you say? Let's go! Oh. Whoa! Oh, where are we? Bro, what happened? Come on, guys! Let's go! Oh, let's go! Oh. Oh. Bro, why is the hill so big? Oh, fuck. Oh. oh my gosh, look at all those people! Bro, they look so miserable. Not picking cotton fast enough. Man, I can't believe they're so miserable. Bro. I know. It's so it's sad. It's crazy. This. Oh my is God! What the industrial revolution? But let's go somewhere else. Oh! Oh! Where am I? Why am I in a children's playground in the middle of like nowhere? I gotta find Colton. I gotta find Mr. Vindaloo. Oh man. Bro, now where is Mr. Vindaloo, bro? 
so during the Industrial oh, Revolution, okay. India's main source of income transferred from cotton and textiles to just cotton due to the British's invention of the spinning jenny, which allowed them to produce textiles at a much faster rate. There he is! Oh my gosh, Colton! Bro, where am I? Well, are you alright? Time is. Mr. Vindaloo, where'd you take us? We're in the mystical land of... Patsy T. Mink, Central Oahu Regional Park in Waipaku. Now that we have our whole class here, we may continue. India was heavily impacted by the Industrial Revolution after Britain started commercially producing goods. Not only that, they had to produce significantly more cotton than they used to due to Britain's need of this cotton. Bro, Mr. Vindaloo, what is this on my waist? Hmm, what's that? Oh wow, this is some good information. This quote by Howard says it all. Tons of inexpensive factory-made textiles flooded the markets in England, Europe, and India. Sellers of handmade fabrics in Indian markets could not compete with the lower-priced English cloth that was suddenly so abundant." End quote. So over time, more and more British people got involved in political affairs to get the resources they wanted. Europeans also started moving into India in order to get cotton and textiles. Indian people also adapted and learned new strategies from their new bosses. The IRS tells me that by rejecting older indigenous traditions about how land was owned and used and reorganizing the tax system, the British government created conditions that helped their commercial goals that hurt the Indian people. Small rice farmers could not pay their taxes, were evicted, and larger plantations were created where more cotton could be grown to feed the textile mills of England, convincing the Indians that they had to wear British factory-made pants, vests, and bowler hats to be truly civilized, also ensured greater commercial profits. The shift in political control was now paving the way for de-industrialization. De Mr. Vindaloo, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? My students, I have met it. All right, my students. Now we shall discuss India after the industrial revolution. Where am I? My students, is India after the Industrial Revolution. Bro, wait, where's Simon? Simon, tell me where you at, bro. Oh, where is everybody? Why did I wake up in the women's bathroom? That was so weird. Now, where is Colton and uh, Mr. Vindaloo? Oh my god, Tommy, we found Oh my gosh. gosh. Oh, oh my god, I'm so scared. India still produced cotton after the Industrial Revolution. It became much less important as many other countries started to produce their own. Hello? Is, is this Howard? Wow. You say that, quote, other parts of India's service industry include electricity production and tourism. The country is largely dependent on fossil fuel, oil, gas, and coal, but it is increasingly adding capacity to produce hydroelectricity, wind, solar, and nuclear power, end quote. Wow, that's a great source. <laughs> the Indian people did not like British control over their country. The Indian soldiers rebelled because their rifles were greased with beef and pork fat, which was very frowned upon in India. Many Indian soldiers refused to use these guns, as the Indian people weakened in power since there wasn't any money going to them and the British plantation owners were owning most of the money. The East India Company was the group that held most of the economic and political power in India. They even had Indian soldiers at their disposal. 
Due to British influence in India, they eventually de-industrialized and started producing only raw materials. The British prevented new technology from going to India to destroy their competition in the textile industry. Did you grease our guns with pork fat and beef fat? Sure, right I did. Bro, we're not gonna use these guns. Let's go, man. Here are three quotes from three different sources of how the cotton plantations affected India. As said by India's CSR, quote, Indian farmers were forced to produce cotton plantations so that it could fuel English factories as India was then under the British rule, end quote. Quote is said by Beck. The emphasis on cash crops resulted in a lot of self-sufficiency for many villagers. The conversion to cash crops reduced food production, causing famines in the late 1800s, end quote. And the last quote is by Reddy in 2015, quote, Despite being famous, the Indian handicrafts industry began to fall at the beginning of the 18th century. The policy of mercantilism adopted by the British was the principal reason, end quote. Now, my students, we shall talk about one of the most influential inventions in the history of the Indian Industrial Revolution. The spinning jenny. Oh. oh my gosh. I can't believe we're finally together after your teleportation spell, Mr. Vindaloo. Now we can talk about the spinning jenny together. Firstly, the spinning wheel was needed for the spinning jenny to exist. The spinning wheel was an early invention that turned fiber into cloth or yarn. What? Well, what are you doing on the table? Then, James Hargreaves invented the spinning jenny, which was an improvement of many of these previous inventions. So in 1764, the spinning jenny was invented and made the creation of textiles much faster. The spinning jenny was a stepping stone for the advancement of textile production and had a positive impact in the world as more people had access to clothing. However, the spinning jenny led to the destruction of handmade crafts in India as they could no longer compete with the fast textile production of the British. Yeah. Well, children, I hope that you have learned a lot about the Industrial Revolution in India. Yes, this has really changed my perspective about what I think about India during the Industrial Revolution. I'm no longer a hater. Well, that's great to hear, Colton. And now, until next time... Whoa! Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Man, I can't believe we had an adventure with the legendary Mr. Vindaloo, bro. I know, man. That guy's crazy. I wish you could meet him again someday. Yep. I hope you've learned a lot from our presentation. This social issue is still a problem, so I hope you learn a lot about it. Same as Tymon and Colton from Mr. Vindaloo. And make sure to do the Google form. Get your money, man. Like those so I'm hopeful. Yes, I am hopeful for today. Take this music and use it. Let it take you away and be hopeful. Hopeful. And he'll make a way I know it ain't easy But that's okay Cause we hopeful I wish that you could show some love Instead of hating so much When you see some other people coming up I wish I could teach the world a scene Write some music and have them tripping off the joy I bring I wish that we can hold hands Listen instead of dissing lessons from a grown man And I wish the families that lack But got love get some stacks Brand new shock and a lack that's on dubs And I wish we could keep achieving wonders See the vision of the world through the eyes of Stevie Wonder You feel me? And I hope all the kids eat And don't nobody in my family see six feet You dig? I hope the mother stands strong You can make it whether you with them or your man's gone And I wish I could give every celly some commissary And a popo bring the heat on no piece like they did like Kelly And I wish that D.O.C. could scream again And bullets could reverse and pocket Biggie breathe again Then one day they could speak again I wish that we only saw good news every time we look at CNN I wish we could never get the blues Wish I could bring back the people that died at E2 I wish that we could walk the path, stay doing the right thing, hustle hard Wait, I just realized something. How are we supposed to get back to school, man?
Wait, we have school still yet? Yeah?